What's up, everybody? We are back. John Della Rose here, the leading Hispanic voice in science fiction. As you know, I've kind of been on a Steve Ditko kick lately, and I've been amassing every collected edition of Ditko I could find uh, so that I could really get a good survey of his work beyond just the Spider-Man and the Doctor Strange that everybody, of course, already knows. And he was a pretty prolific guy. He did a lot of stuff for a lot of different companies. Now, this is a collection from Fantagraphics, uh, which is called the Ditko Collection, and there are two volumes of it. And this is back when Fantagraphics was a much smaller company. 1985, this was published, edited by Robin Snyder, who collaborated with Steve Ditko for decades and decades and decades. So, uh, Fantagraphics put this out. It's on older paper, you know, it's, it, it, it definitely has that feel to it. Uh, feels, you know, slightly better than newsprint and all that. Uh, but this is the only place a lot of these Mr. A stories are collected. Mr. A is Steve Ditko's sort of uh, pride of his creation. It's his objectivist hero who uh, the name comes from the, uh, the concept that A equals A. So good is always good. Evil is always evil. You can't really have shades of gray. It doesn't exist. If you think about a shade of gray, it just means you're darkening something that's good. Uh, and so you are creating something that is evil and uh, or at least sliding down the path toward evil. Um, and so he really wanted to illustrate this uh, and he did so through a series of stories called Mr. A. Now he ended up doing 20 something issues of Mr. A and none of them are, are collected. There's no omnibus. There's no big collection. Uh, some of the different stories appear in different Steve Ditko package books published by Robin Schneider. Or, uh, or like The Avenging World or things like that, again, published by Robin Snyder. Uh, but this is as close as it gets to having a, a bunch of uh, the Mr. A stuff collected. Now, this came from various issues of different comics from 1960, what did it say on the cover? Uh, 1966 and 1973. Um, and not all of it's Mr. A. There's a couple Midnight Special. It's a one-pager. Uh, the Breakout, also a one-pager. And then there's a couple of series called the H series and J series of comics, of which I'll get to. But most of it's Mr. A, and I think this comprises, you know, when they actually started reprinting these, the first four or so issues of Mr. A, maybe five, not sure. Um, but it's a very interesting little collection, and this gets a lot of flack from comic readers as not being the most readable of material because he really does... Uh, push the objectivist sort of philosophy more than anything else and it's meant to show that it's like it's almost like I don't want to call it a chick tract of uh, objectivist philosophy but in a lot of ways it is and so he's showing off that philosophy and trying to explain what it is to people more than anything else in here and that's that's what you see but it actually made for a very interesting read it's very different than a lot of other comics that I've read uh, before so you get this little, uh, the little cute one shot uh, up front. Some nice, uh, nice art right here, and then we get into Mr. A. Now, Mr. A uh, is a journalist by day, and then he puts on his Mr. A armor. This is a, a mask and suit of armor that he puts on so that he's you know immune to bullets and stuff like that. Um, and he has a little calling card. It's it's black or white, and he and he goes after. Uh, people regardless. Now what happens is a lot of the people in the, the background of the stories are sort of, um, they're, they're not exactly black and white. They're, they're the types that are like, well, we want to go after the criminal, but not really if it's our friend, because, you know, in that case, you know, it's just, it's just rude to go after your friends. And, you know, what about the social good involved? And they talk about that, uh, you know, sort of, uh, at length in this, in these various stories. And they're all very short like this. And what's interesting is, is Mr. A, in the first one, he's showing that he's rescuing a woman uh, who's, who's getting attacked. Uh, but he actually leaves the, um, he leaves the villain who is falling off the side of the building at the end of their fight uh, to die. Because he's just like, because in his world, he's evil, so he's not going to expend his energy on saving evil. It's not, not your Spider-Man who's going to make sure everybody lives at the end of the day. None of that. And uh, and the commentary from, the, of course, society towards Mr. A during all of this is that he's he's so cruel. It's terrible. But Steve Ditko uh, is trying to say, look, that's the, that's the right uh, way to be. Now, uh, the second story has to deal with uh, people and 
uh, trying to bribe uh, him as a journalist. And he won't accept bribes at all, so they, they try to force him, coerce him. And a lot of the stories, again, are, are just about, like, corruption, um, societal corruption, people trying to force you to do something, uh, force you into acting badly, uh, either either by co coercion with, through money or co coercion through physical force. Uh, there are, are ways in which to force people to do what they wouldn't want to do otherwise. And uh, he deals with that in this. These first two stories are pretty fun. I actually enjoyed them uh, just as comics by themselves. I think the art's actually very good, very expressive as usual uh, from Mr. Uh, from Steve Ditko's art style. All in black and white, so you really just get him, uh, you know, in his pure art right here, which is kind of nice to read uh, without, without uh, all the colors uh, that tend to dilute these things. Um, and then it gets further into the philosophy the more you get into this stuff. So, of course, you've got, you've got um, what it is. And these guys are trying to have the journalist root out corruption at some point. And he starts with the mob bosses. And, of course, they go, oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Then he goes to the middlemen who are working for the mob bosses. And they're like, well, these guys aren't so bad. I mean, they're just doing their jobs. And he's like, well, do you want me to root out evil or not? Because if you want to stop evil, you have to go all the way. You can't just can't just uh, do the, the obvious and uh, and stop there. Um, and then uh, and then eventually it goes into their friends and they panic because he's he's now looking into more than they wanted them to, and and they know that their friends are also corrupt. And so he won't back down because he's going to do what's right regardless. And that is uh, that is the archetypal man here. Um, his name is Rex Grain. Is the uh, is the character? And of course, they call him evil uh, while he's actually rooting out the corruption because you know it's a, it's just about them and their social group. It's not about not about actual truth in there. Um, estimation and so uh a lot of these then end up not actually being full comics but just kind of illustrating the type of quizzling people that are out there in the world who are opposed to good and um and uh, and okay with corruption and um and that's what this next uh one is about here i've actually got a little ad about fantagraphics books uh from the 80s uh, here which i'm keeping just because it's cute um and then uh, some of these just get into pure essays. And so we had, a, we had of course, an intro to this essay. Um, so is violence bad in and of itself? No, but the, the, the aspect of trying to force somebody is, is what the root of the problem is. Uh, and that's just something that we like to address on that front. But there can be violence, which is self-defense, of course, which is what this uh, talks about. And that is not necessarily a bad thing. And so that's, uh, that's where it goes with that essays. So, and it uh, goes into good or evil. Very nice. Uh, this is a really cool pinup with this, like, corruption and all this uh, as Mr. A is walking the thin line of truth, right, between all that. And you'll see a couple more of those over the course of this volume. So, um, just more of these sort of, like, uh, you know, dealing with the, the quizlings here. Um, we get a we get another one-shot where it's just, a, it's just a cute little tiger story. Uh, through here, yeah, I wish there were more of these, honestly, just like to break this up because it'd be a, it'd be, it's a nice, uh, it's a nice break from when you're getting into the heavy philosophy. Not that I mind the heavy philosophy, but I do like uh, the break. So this next volume here actually goes over like different types of good and evil, like earned uh, versus unearned money. So if you're, if you're unearned is trying to steal, earned is is working hard for something. Mutual consent versus force, and every single one of these stories has a illustration of initiation of force versus retaliation to force. Uh, and, and how something is good or evil, depending on uh, the situation. And then this uh, this one actually illustrates the corruption process of moving good towards evil. So very interesting right there. Um, we have uh, another another pinup of Mr. A, his calling card here. And we just saw this whole uh, walk in the line between all this stuff as everybody's kind of clinging to their, uh, to, to their evils here. And this is a double page spread version of that, which is very beautiful um very 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 detailed and interesting expressions all over it's uh absolutely crazy and uh and um psychedelic almost thought we get more of the grain stories here and the mr a stories as we go through this very cool um and then we get into this h series now this is interesting 
So, um, so this H series, H stands for hero. Uh, any person admired for his qualities and achievements is regarded as ideal or model. So a man is a rational animal. So who is a hero in this instance? And this uh, involves a man who is an actor, and the actor gets signed for a contract uh, to do some movies because they like his acting ability because he's good. And then they want to put him in these movies where... Uh, it's, it's all about moral decay and anti-heroes and all this other stuff. And the actor says, no, I'm not going to do that. And, uh, they say, well, we've got your contract, so we're going to just force you to never work if that's the case. And he's like, well, fine. Um, you know, if you've got my contract, it is what it is. I'm not going to break my contract, but I'm also not going to work in these movies. And so he is upholding, uh, his human value and just bettering himself over the course of this being a hero as it may be. And as this comes through, uh, it, it turns out a lot of these guys are forcing and coercing people into things. And so he gets in a little Viking suit and starts uh, starts fighting uh, the corruption here. Uh, this was an excellent story. I think this was my favorite in the volume. And uh, I really like the art and just the way that uh, a lot of this, a lot of the faces are done. Just very cool. Very good stuff right here. Um, and it's a pretty long one. So um, Dicko really likes writing those really short vignette type stories. And this is a, gosh, I don't know how many pages this was. It was at least, uh, at least 16 pages there. I think it was a two-parter. Two they split up into two different issues. But very good. I enjoyed the hero there. I enjoyed seeing that hero and, and introducing to him. I would have liked to see more. Uh, I don't know if this guy ever comes back in a different form. But very cool stuff. Um, and then, uh, we get a little girl kidnapped and Mr. A solving her kidnapping and helping her out. Um, and, uh, very good story again. I mean, this is just absolutely fun. Uh, this has a little, I mean, it's got a little objectivism in it, but it's not as, uh, I wouldn't say as preachy as some of the others. It's, it's a lot easier to relate to rescuing a little girl who's been kidnapped, uh, because obviously anybody who does that is evil. And then we get the J series at the very end. What is justice? And this is a very cool story also. Um, so uh, what is a critter of justice? Is it the law? Is it the good of society? Or is it a natural right? Is it subjective or is it objective? And it's all about a doctor who's in this military camp. Um, basically, this uh, tyrant tyrants have taken over this country. The, the tyrant himself is uh, sick or in a, injured and in bed. And they want the doctor to fix him. And the doctor says, no, I'm not going to work on him. <laughs> and they're like, what about your oath to, to help and all that? He's like, I'm only going to help good. And this guy's evil. Um, and so uh, not only does he hold out even through coercion and attempts at his life and attempts at other people's lives. But once he sees a gal who helped him, who did so at risk to herself, uh, get shot and have problems, he actually then turns around and helps her even though it doesn't seem to be a benefit to him because he sees that she's good and he wants to do what's good as a doctor. That's that, that is his, his uh, work right there. And so he will help the good person through the work and it won't help the bad person no matter how, how it goes. And there's a big diatribe right here at the, at the end, uh, big wall of text, which is tough. Uh, but uh, the summary of it is basically that, you know, look, um, you know, they, these, these guys took over the country. Maybe they were working, maybe it was bad people running it before, but these people were just as bad. They were acting, uh, within, within force for their, uh, reasons. And, uh, and so it's just, uh, saying that no matter how that sort of force is applied, that, that always ends up a bad thing. So pretty neat. Um, this is Steve Ditko's real first foray into these sorts of comics and all that. And it, um, he, he continues along this path and just stays true to himself, much like the doctor in that last book. He stays true, true to himself as an artist uh, through the rest of his career from this point. And I find that completely admirable. Maybe this is not going to be the most commercially uh, exciting stuff, not, not the stuff that's going to uh, get uh, people, you know, wearing their Spidey Man pajamas and all that. Uh, but at the end of the day, this has uh, a lot more thought put into it. And it spurs a lot more thought within a person reading it uh, than a lot of those other comics do. And so there's tremendous value to it, uh, in my opinion. Now, this is out of print, and uh, there is no collected Mr. A beyond this, really. This is about all you get. There is a second volume of this. I, I'm not sure what stories are in it. I haven't read it yet. It is also tremendously hard to find. So um, good luck with that. <laughs>
<laughs> if you want to go find this. But uh, it's, a, it's a nice overview of the Objectivist stories. I'm glad I read it, and uh, I thought it was very enjoyable. The art is phenomenal. Um, I, I think there are points where it gets a little wordy um, and a little bogged down. Um, and so, but it's, it, uh, is still brilliant work regardless. So I'll call this about an eight out of 10 overall, uh, worth the read. And I hope more people will discover this. Have you read any of Steve Ditko's objectivist work? What do you think about that? Um, uh, I don't subscribe to objectivism, obviously. Um, but I, you know, it's like any human philosophy rooted in humanity, there is a kernel of truth to it. And so it points towards the direction of truth in that there is objective and uh, objective truth. That truth is not subjective. Uh, that is, I agree with that aspect of it. And of course, everybody's going to have a, a, a little bit of a different uh, philosophy in the way that they look at things. So um, yeah, there, there's value, I believe. And uh, especially in a world where we're told everything is subjective, and that, uh, that you know, anti-heroes are fine, and that you know, there, there really is no hero. Uh, you know, uh, we've talked about this in videos before. Um, just having this as a counterbalance, uh, uh, almost a counterculture, I think is important. And I think we need more of it out there. All right, guys, I'll be back soon. Uh, thanks for listening to this. And I will be talk to you soon. Oh, hit the like and subscribe button, of course. See ya.